So a lot of articles written recently about the fan mail that the Parkland shooter has been receiving and people are very shocked, disturbed by it. Now this isn't new, just ones that I've known about, other killers who've gotten similar fan mail, Breivik, the, the Menendez brothers, um, the Boston bomber, James Holmes, the guy who shot up that theater, Richard Ramirez, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, which is a very interesting case because Jeffrey Dahmer was gay and all his victims, victims that he killed and had sex with, they were, they were men and, and boys. So he gets males, fascinating. Ted Bundy, disturbingly, women would actually dress like his victims um, and then and then go to the prison, try to meet with him, send him photos, dressed up like his victims. So this is a big enough phenomenon that there's actually a name for it, habristophilia. John Wayne Gacy, the Columbine Killers, why are all these people getting fan mail? Now, no one knows exactly why habristophilia exists, but I'm going to run through all the different theories people have for why, why this is such a phenomenon. Now... The first would be, we glorify serial killers that are perceived as very powerful, and there's that famous quote by Kissinger, power is the greatest aphrodisiac. So for someone who's attracted to power, maybe they're going to be attracted to these individuals who, rightly or wrongly, they perceive to be very powerful. Then there's the, the idea that there's that cliche, women like bad boys. Now, is this a different phenomenon, or is this just an extreme example of the same phenomenon, where all the things that, that attracts women or people in general to people that are bad for them um, you know, pissing off society, doing stuff that you're told is wrong and doing stuff that you're told is taboo. The idea of changing someone, the idea that if someone's a really bad person and they treat everyone around them badly, but then you're so special and you're able to change them they're, and they're able to treat you well, even though they treat everyone else bad, that makes you feel special. There's that idea. And this is, you know, an extreme example of that. There's the idea that there's a bit of danger. It's, and some people are attracted to the sense of the, the rush and the adrenaline of, of danger. Um, so there's that. There's the idea that this is female trolling, that this is some people, they just like doing things to piss people off, be a rebel, get a rise out of people. And this is one example of doing something that, that shocks people and people get so upset and affronted. You know, how can you, how can you be attracted to someone who's such a monster? How can you send letters and, and fan mail to someone who's such a monster? So for people who like getting a rise out of someone, this could be an effective way to do it. And then there's the idea of these women being addicted to fame and notoriety, and they want to use this as a way to get really famous. Now you might say, well, this is silly. They might send a letter, but nothing's ever going to come out of it. They're never actually going to get married or form a relationship. That's actually not true. Charles, um, sorry, Ted Bundy married a woman. They actually had a kid together. Richard Ramirez married a woman and their names, I'm not going to say them, but their names are, I wouldn't say as well known as the killers, but their names are, are out there. They have, they have articles written about them. So the idea that this is a strategy that's, that's insane or could never work, no, it has worked for some women where they have achieved notoriety via this method. And then there's the idea that for some people, they don't want a real relationship that comes along with all the messiness. What they want is some kind of idealized fantasy version of love. So for someone who their only interactions with a serial killer is through reading about them, through maybe exchanging letters, through prison visits, they never have to deal with normal, messy relationship stuff that's not so glamorous. Uh, farting in the bed, uh, messy bathrooms, passive aggressive comments, you know, you know, getting sick of each other. So for them, they're able to have this whirlwind fantasy idealized relationship because they don't actually ever come into contact with that person enough to actually have uh, have the real normal relationship stuff. And then there's the idea that some of these women, they're the ultimate control freaks and they love having a relationship where they actually they perceive it to have, they have all the power. They can choose to accept calls or not. They can choose whether to go to the prison and have a visit or not. So normally a relationship, there's this kind of balance, give or take here. It's a very unbalanced relationship in some sense where they are free. They're not in prison. The other person is in prison and they're kind of at their beck and call. Very funny uh, Seinfeld episode about this. Actually, George starts dating a female convict and talks about, you know, tongue in cheek, all the, all the advantages that go along with that. Plus, I know where she is all the time. <laughs> I have relatively no competition. <laughs> and, you, and you know how you live in fear of the popping? Poppin'. Yeah, no popping, no in the neighborhood, no I saw your light was on. And then there's the idea, and there's research that a lot of the women who have this, this fantasy or this, or this attraction, they have been in abusive relationships in the past. So you could say that they've in some sense by by falling in love with the serial killers behind bars, they found a glitch in the system. So they, for whatever reason, they're attracted to these abusive guys. So what they've found is a way for them to be in a relationship with an abusive guy who's terrible, he's a serial killer, without actually suffering abuse because of these practical realities that he's locked up and they're not spending time alone together. 
she can fulfill all these all these desires that for whatever reason she wants to be with these abusive guys without actually suffering the actual consequences of of abuse there's also the idea that there's there's past abuse and oftentimes we we subconsciously or consciously we want to recreate these traumatic situations we found ourselves in in the past for a variety of reasons but potentially recreate this kind of traumatic situation and then rewire and kind of and kind of be be the be the winner in the situation rather than the victim and in that way you can kind of rewire your brain rewire your traumas so they may see this as an opportunity where they could create another similar abusive relationship situation but this time they have the power they have the advantage and maybe that can in some sense help them heal and then there's this quote in pride and prejudice where elizabeth says everything strengthens that which is strong already and it's quite a good quote and basically the idea is if you have someone who's very attractive for whatever reason they might be very good looking and then you add anything to their persona and their image, their ability to play a guitar, them being able to eat, eat a lot of food, them being a competitive eater, whatever you add, whatever you add to them, you already finding them attractive. Once you find out anything else about them, that's just going to make you like them even more. So for these serial killers, it's that people are already attracted to them anyways, just because they might be conventionally attractive and good looking. And some of them are Richard Ramirez. Um, who I've talked about, he's a pretty good looking guy, um, I think most people would say. So you add anything on top of that, Richard Ramirez could be a, a competitive swimmer. And then people would go crazy for him and they would say, oh my god, and people would be like, well, are, are people crazy for competitive swimming? No, it's just they're very attracted to this person and then whatever else they're doing gets kind of caught up in that. And whereas if someone was unattractive and they committed these horrible crimes and they were a serial killer, and you can think Virginia Tech shooter, you can look him up and see what he looks like. As far as I know, he doesn't get any fan mail. So you could say, are women really attracted or are people in general attracted to these serial killers? Are people just attracted to good looking people who do weird things, whatever that weird thing is?